some sound devices. He's going to walk us through the A20 Nexus wireless receiver and uh, uh, associated accoutrement. <laughs> yes, that's very well put. Yeah. Thank you. I love this little uh, power station too, by the way. Okay. That's nice. Yeah, we can talk about that. That's an accessory that goes with But basically, what we're showing here, I don't know, hopefully you can see all this oh, on yeah, the camera. Oh, yeah, we'll get people uh, too. I'll be rolled. Cool. Um, so, yeah, here's uh, A20 Nexus, one here and one here in this rack. So this is um, showing you that it's half rack width size um, and only one U. So very space-saving uh, format, right? right? But the amazing thing is you can get up to 16 receiver channels in wow. this size box. That's uncommon. That's... <laughs> You know, typically you'd be looking at a whole rack of gear to achieve 16 channels in one box. Right. Right? And this is true diversity, um, digital wireless, okay? So up to 16 channels, um, the unit actually comes standard as eight channels. And you basically, to get it up to 16 channels, you can buy these expansion licenses. Gotcha, okay. Right? And they come in packs of four type things. So you, you can uh, expand it up to 12 channels and then 16 channels. So the nice thing about that is you can start off with an eight-channel system and then gradually expand as you need to, depending sure. on your Without type Without having to buy new hardware. Exactly. Okay. Um, the other nice thing, by the way, with those expansion licenses is you can rent them. Oh, okay, cool. So if you're maybe only doing one job a year, which requires that extra number of channels, just rent for a week or a month. Okay. okay. But how, really, how granular can those rentals be? Only in fours. No, sorry. Oh, uh, a day, week like... is a, week, a one week minimum okay. or a month minimum. Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, so let's cover some of the core technology of why the A20 Nexus receiver is way ahead of any other wireless system out there. And I'm talking sure, Sennheiser, anything. And I wouldn't say bring up names unless I felt very confident hey, about it. I love the and I'll, give, I'll give you the reasons why. Um, Number one, one of the core technologies that is in all our wireless equipment. And uh, by the way, just to let you know, the A20 Nexus is a multi-channel receiver, but a receiver doesn't really have any use unless there's transmitters to go with it, right? Right, right. So we have A20 transmitters here. We have mini transmitter packs. We have yeah, mini... Grab one of those. And we have... A wonderful like, size. Yeah, they're really... And curved, so they fit really nicely yeah. in, the, um, in the body. Well, and, and those, like, leg packs or whatever, the, the little wraps that they'll put on people sometimes that's nice like yeah so there's the pouches that work really well they f they fall into the skin really nicely and some of the actors that have used these they they've used them and they just won't go back after using these not too hot yeah. either like this I mean, one not even hot. yeah this one here has got what we call the battery doubler accessory fitted which is exactly the same transmitter but it's got a door with a, an extra battery in it so it okay, doubles so that's, this is the oh and it's the little sony you know what that's yeah, the same battery well. it's the same battery on my uh what was that little action camera the and the x1000 all right yeah they're, you, they're ubiquitous you get them everywhere recharge you can re recharge them in here as well so oh, this cool. will give double the battery USB -C life. on top yeah. they'll give about up to four and a half hours and one and up to about nine hours with this one. one oh and it's metal too yeah nice. and that's even quite small and dinky as well ba fit nice. barely heavier wonderful okay so these are your transmitters and um we're, you know, we're working on a whole r range of extra transmitters for this platform as well. But sure. here's the receiver. So one of the core technologies behind it was something we called SpectraBand. And what that essentially means is this super wide tuning range that goes from 470 megahertz all the way up to 1500 megahertz. Wow. Okay. Now, virtually all, all wireless systems, that's the widest of any system in the, in the world, yeah. right? Most systems will just cover the UHF region, typically 470 up to about 700. So this gives you so much more capability to find clean spectrum. Yeah. And as we know, spectrum is becoming more and more crowded, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's just one unit. The transmitters cover that same range. You're always going to be able to find a clean frequency, no matter where you are in the world. Right. right? Most of our competitors, they, well, they can't cover that wide range. But even if they want to sort of move to sort of different blocks of frequencies, they, you have to buy a different hardware right and that means your that means your inv inventory costs and management becomes very very difficult so if you're at all into traveling the globe spectra band is a wonderful thing the other part about spectra band is 
we've divided because it's such a wide range, right? We've divided it up into all these tuning bands, um, smaller tuning bands, which are a little easier than dragging through every single. Yeah, hertz. yeah. But the main reason for it is because these tuning bands are defined by very, very tight filters, like almost brick wall filters, which give us the benefit of being able to really filter out out of band interference, like DTV, IFB, walkie talkies, all that, so that your actual audio that you want is not being affected by out of band interference, which is such a common problem now. Totally. So we've got all that technology here. Um, another key thing that makes Nexus, this is one of my favorite things about this product. Oh, just touch that. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, it's something we call Nexlink, um, and it's our own proprietary protocol um, for controlling the transmitters over super long distances from the receiver. Them. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, for instance, if you had, give me an example, right? A talent is like a long way, about 100 meters away, we're getting good audio, but then they walk off a little bit further, right? And they're getting to the end of the range, right? Right. They're say 120 meters or whatever. And they're starting to drop out and think, God, I wish I could increase their RF power on their transmitter. Right. But you don't want to have to call that actor back. Come over here. You know? Right, right. So from here, I can just go into that channel. And oh, it's all touchscreen. Yeah. Oh, nice. I can come into here, select the, the channel that this is paired with. Right. And then just select the RF power box and then up the power. And they go, oh, now we've got good audio again. So that's just one example. I can also set frequency of the transmitter. So if so, for some reason an external interfering signal started stomping on the current frequency, right. I could just change it from here all remotely. So th that's amazing because, yeah, calling over the actor and being like, let me fiddle with that for a minute or interrupting a take or so like, oh, wait, 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 wait. You know, that's nice that you can just do it. Now, this is not necessarily a new thing. Uh, well, it is. Yeah, I'm not an audio guy. It, it, it's it, all new it, to me. It, 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 <laughs> It is a new thing. There are other companies out there that have a way to send information from the receiver to the transmitter. Sure. Okay. I'm not going to mention, but they have the technology to do it. One of them requires that the transmitter is right up close, like his, which is not practical at all. Right. Because you're telling the actor to come back 150 yards. Right. The other, um, <clears throat> the other one requires um, all these repeater boxes to be placed everywhere sure. to get this reliable. This is all just integrated internally within the actual unit and, and the range is far greater than anything out there. And so is that inherent in this box or do you also need the... Uh... Nope, it's inherent in this box. The only things the you need, on that? these are the antennas that do this backlink control to the transmitter, right? For, and, but how, how far can you get with just those? For controlling the transmitter? Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously there's going to be... It depends on the environment, sure. but we've been getting like at least double the forward link. I mean, oh wow, okay, damn. I, I've actually had up to half a kilometer, but there's nothing else around. Right, right? sure, yeah. Um, but Line in this sight. environment, this is like a, a trade show where there's typically. Worst case scenario. Yeah, I mean, 2.4 gigahertz everywhere. There's Bluetooth, there's Wi Fi. Nextlink is not using those technologies. It is right. 2.4 gigahertz, but it's not using those. It's our own technology. And here it's working totally solidly, but it, all our Bluetooth. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi devices are dead. Yeah. So oh, we know. It has <laughs> been designed specifically for this type of long-range, crowded environment application, and it's all built in. So that's next link, another very important aspect. And let me just show you one amazing benefit of that, because lovely. And maybe we can do this with B-roll later. Yeah. But we have a feature that really makes the best of that. It's a frequency coordination tool. Okay. Right? Cool. You know we have very crowded spectrum. We've got a tool here called Auto Assign. Um, just come in here. This is all touch screens. You can see auto sign, which basically is it. Hold on, is that display uh, going across all three, or is yeah. that three different displays? No, it's three different That's displays very nice. all joined together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spanned across. All right. That's cute. So basically, we're looking at the the spectrum of the current tuning band we're in. Okay. Right. And I'm going to. I, I want it to basically auto look for the cleanest frequencies that aren't being interfered with, and then automatically select those frequencies program into the receiver and then send those frequencies to our transmitters, right? That's amazing. And let's just define a little range here. So I'm going to say, first of all, I'm going to turn them all on to make sure they're all on. Uh, I've got this all on feature here. So let's just do that. 
Um, OK, and go back to my RTSA. Right, so we've got four transmitters. You can see them here because of the these orange peaks, pings. right? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to come in here, go to my auto assign, and I'm going to say I want them all to fall within this width, right? Okay. So I'm going to, that's my start, and then I'm going to put my end, say, there. Uh, let's move this one maybe to there. I know, something oh, like so that. you've got touch in, you've got yeah. the little knob. Yeah, exactly. That's nice. So there you go. Uh, now I'm just going to hit go, and it's going to look for the clean, clean frequencies now. And it says, look, I found four out of four clean frequencies. Touch that, and there they are. All I love, I don't know if it's actually representative of what's happened, but I do love the, this is aesthetically pleasing, is them all dropping down and then rising back up in the other spot versus yeah. just popping over well, there. Well, what it's doing is before it does the auto sign, it's like, well, I'm going to turn you off first because we don't want those frequencies to interfere with our measurement. So it's turning the transmitters off, and they could be hundreds of meters away. Right. It does its measurement, and then turns them back on and moves them all to the correct frequency. I love that, and I also imagine that uh, that makes uh, accessibility in terms of like maybe someone is getting into sound or something if they could afford this system that it seems like I can understand it and I'm a cinematographer right this and is exactly and that was one of our design concepts we said look we want to make you know, at, yeah, at the end of the day audio people want to capture good audio right there's not, not, not a huge number of them who are RF gurus, right. right? And it's becoming much more challenging now with the crowded spectrum. So you find yourself dealing with the RF matters most of the day, where you really want to focus on the audio. Right. So this makes it one touch setup. Yeah, that's so nice. Um, and yeah, so I mean, that's uh, a really key feature. And, so that gives you one example of this next link control. Because without next link, there's no way we could have told the transmitters to move. Sure. OK, one other big thing about the Nexus is um, we have this web app control for it. Yep. OK. Did I mention that already? No. OK. So the nice thing about Nexus, because it's small, it can be running a bag over the shoulder. Yeah. We've got one over there that How does that. Way? Not much. Pounds. OK. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, Not sure. much. Uh, <laughs> Figured I'd ask. Uh, probably, I'm guessing, something like two, three pounds. Something. All right. That's reasonable. I know. I'd have to look that up. But, um, it's on the internet. It's on the internet. Um, uh, so in a bag, it's great. And you can um, actually dock it directly to the top of one of our 8 Series recorders. Oh, so okay. it's actually integrated with it. Wonderful. Um, if, you don't, if you want to use a different type of recorder, you can. It's all fine. Uh, but you can also run it on a cart in a situation like this, in a 1U rack. Yeah. There it is there. Oh, this is the power station that you talked about before. This is basically an eight-way charger for the transmitters. You can just, just slip, a little USB you can just slip them in, chunk. and away you go, right? Oh, with the, that's nice that you can... Oh, it's doubled up. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, you, there's holes in there, so you can. You don't that have was going to take be my next question, off, but, so, right? but you can put two per. I didn't see yeah. that initially. Two per yeah. slot. And you can fit the the one with the battery doubler as well in there too. Uh -huh. but only, up to a maximum of four, obviously. Right, right. Um, but yeah, this does all the charging. It also acts as a as a way to get all your recordings off the transmitters into your computer because there's USB-C on the back. Oh, so brilliant! You can transfer all eight volumes onto your computer. That's and great. And then it also has time code, so you can jam all your transmitters. Let's get, that was my next question was going to be like, does it sync the time code? Yeah, it does. Not Fantastic. that you really need it now, because this will sync it all automatically for you as well. Sure. If you plug time code into the back of this and you set your transmitters to record mode, the time code all just gets sent over next link all automatically. You have nothing. You, there's no setup. Uh, I did interrupt you about the web app, though. You were starting to go into that. Yeah, so the web app is really just a nice, much larger interface that you can use to control every aspect of... If you don't like the touch screen, I personally do. Sure. But even if you do love the touch screen, this makes it possible to run your Nexus remotely. And the important thing about that is if you can get your receiver as close to the talent wearing the transmitters and minimize that range between transmitter and receiver, you're virtually eliminating the possibility of RF dropouts. Right, right, right. right. Keep that distance short. So if we can run this remotely, you know, I might be sitting here at my mixing console and I, sit, I put that 100, 200 meters away. I can do that with one cable. It's got network connectivity, so via one Cat5 cable connected to its RJ40, one of its RJ45 ports, right. you can power the Nexus because it's got 
power over Ethernet capability. Wonderful. PoE Plus. You can also bring, this has got Dante output. Dante is audio over IP. You probably okay, know that. Great. No. Okay, well. <laughs> Again, cinematographer, I'm learning a lot. It, you're going to see Dante everywhere around this show. Gotcha. Dante has become really the de facto standard for transmitting multiple channels of digital audio over a single Cat5 cable. Awesome. All right, so this supports that. All our mixers re uh, record it. Alan and Heath does it. Digico does it. Solid State Logic does it. It's everywhere. Okay. And it just means it's so easy to get your audio from A to B. Right. Okay. And so, everyone has an Ethernet yeah. cable. So if I can get 16 channels of audio from my 16 wireless transmitters, transmitting in here, then via the Dante, a few hundred meters to my mixer over that same cable that's being powered, that this is being right. powered by, and then have all my control. Yeah, so you can just put that on like a little light stand, whatever, a yeah. stand and get, just exactly. get that close to the talent yeah. and then do everything from your cart. So that Wonderful. is groundbreaking. Yeah, that's great. Uh, uh, do you want me to leave it there? We've probably done my Oh, yeah, we can leave it there. Uh, I did want to note, though, because we're using camera to cloud with the Fujifilm system, uh, for those of you who don't know, um, the Scorpio also does camera to cloud. So your, your uh, audio mixer and, let's say, your camera guy, uh, it'll all just sync in frame I.O., which is really cool, and that's one of the few units available that does that yeah. audio like and, in general. and when you hear about camera to cloud you've got to be you've got to obviously dig into the details a little bit because there are some systems out there which quote this but really the big benefit of Scorpio and the 8 series doing this camera to cloud is that as soon as you hit stop after your recording it's automatically in the background uploading right for some systems out there you have to you know manually sort of upload this at the end of the day which is no different from Dropbox really right <laughs> right but here literally as you're going in and out of record I hit stop that files going and I can be recording the next take and that files still going yeah and the great thing is yeah. sound the, the one issue with shooting video is obviously the files can be pretty big sound Historically pretty small. And the nice thing is, like, you know, if you're doing this not via Wi-Fi or a hardwired Ethernet link and you're doing it via cellular, as we know, cellular can be can be a bit flaky. Yeah. So if there if the system detects that there's a cellular dropout or breakdown, um, when it comes back in again, it will automatically resume from the exact bit that it got to rather Wonderful. than restarting the whole file again. Wonderful. That's something we added in a fairly recent firmware update. Oh, cool, yeah. And the other thing I, I did here last year, I think Frame says they back your stuff up nine times before it gets to you, so there's safety and security in the, and they also have security issues. But I did want to bring that up because we were using Yeah, we can record three to three media in here as well. So you're never losing, you're never losing any data anywhere, you know. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for talking to me and run through. That's a, uh, that's amazing. If I was a sound person, I'd be very interested. I've definitely seen these pop up more a lot on sets I've worked on. Yeah. Oh, good. Been good to hear. But... Well, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you.